Hello again and welcome to another video in my series, Get Drawing. I've made these videos to help those of you who are thinking about drawing for the first time or returning to it after some years or months or whatever and you need some guidance, you want some encouragement. Now, there are plenty of videos out there, some very good ones, which show you this or that pencil technique or um, how to draw in a particular way. What I'm trying to do is give you something alongside that which just gets you thinking about drawing in its broadest sense because what's good for you may not be good for somebody else or whatever. I want to share with you broad principles that will trigger some ideas within you that are unique to you and will help you on a journey that really um, I can't prescribe for you, I can hopefully open you up to those those opportunities. So we're going to talk about sketchbooks, we're going to talk about different tools and materials you can use, but I also um, want to put the emphasis on ideas and what you can bring to the table. Hope that um, kind of explains what's going on here and that sounds of interest to you. If it does, let's dive in. So in today's video about drawing, I thought it would be good to talk about two main types of drawing, observational and uh, the imaginative or invention. Yeah, I group those two together and we're going to talk about those two probably in a little bit more detail later on. But let's start with observational drawing. Now, within that realm, of looking at something and then getting it down on a sheet of paper. Um, when I was an art student at Sunderland uh, College of Art back in the 80s, um, I was taught by two tutors who taught drawing in two very different ways. One, Barry Hurst, who uh, taught a form of drawing that used uh, charcoal and erasers and was almost a form of painting in a way and, and uh, involved a lot of revision. And the other form was uh, taught by John Peace, an artist whose brain was wired in a completely different way, possibly because of his education, his studies at the Slade. Yeah, um, He really bought into the idea of uh, the observational drawing involving the pencil held out at length um, to the object and then you take a measurement using your thumb top of the pencil and then you bring this back to the paper and place it down make a mark transcribe go back measure again maybe check an angle between a shoulder and a hip or something like that yeah and that constant to and fro between the object and the subject on the paper and the marks that you make effectively evolve um, the drawing and you end up with something that is nearly always in proportion, hopefully, and, uh, you know, bears some relationship to the truth as observed. We'll come back to that. Um, now, the results that can come from this are fine. In fact, they, they, they can be quite fascinating, but they're not really my bag. And I think they can even when they're done well, result in drawing that is rather dead and academic. OK, so that's one form of observational drawing. The other one that Barry Hurst taught, um, he, he, he was very keen about this approach, thinking about light, tone and form and mass and using charcoal, getting a mark down so it's that old fail again fail better that Samuel Beckett made that wonderful phrase that applies to so much in life and art fail again and fail better that the first mark that goes down doesn't need to be the definitive mark yeah so you're almost using the charcoal in a very sort of painterly way um, and then the eraser or further charcoal marks revise what you've laid down and you get from some sort of approximation towards some kind of equivalence yeah and equivalence was what he would talk about a lot yeah so you're observing something but what you end up with and translate it on paper doesn't look the same but it has an equivalence it has an equivalence that speaks to truth speaks to visual truth 
the mind reads it, the heart reads it and understands and believes it and gets something from it. So emotion uh, is a factor, is a component in this process. So uh, you may have heard, or, or if you haven't, it's a nice one to think of, it's, it's quite commonly quoted, the, the uh, phrase that art, painting, drawing, whatever, involves together the heart, hand and head. And I think, although these things can end up being cliches, that is actually very true. That if you, if you have three dials on your, your audio or whatever and you do, you, you're out of tune, if you don't get those all working together, the bass, the treble and the volume, then your listening experience isn't very good. Well, that's kind of the same in the visual realm. If, if, you, if the heart, the hand and the head are out of sync, then then something is out of sync in, in, in the finished drawing as well. Yeah, you get me? Okay, so um, let's look at some examples. No words, no music, just look. Okay, so let's move away from observational drawing into the realm of imagination and invention. Now, I mentioned earlier I wanted to talk about those two concepts together. Okay, remember a time when you were a child, when you would pick up a crayon and paper and draw, and the realms of invention and imagination um, uh, creativity and the real world, they all, they all had parity, they all, they all had equal weight in your, in your universe, yeah? And you can bind all those, um, uh, capabilities, the ability to express yourself in all those different, different ways to make drawing, yeah? And there were a lot of, um, Conventions like perspective, proportion, tone, all the things that um, you get taught later that you had no um, awareness of at the time. And yet, don't we nearly all universally love children's drawings for their honesty and their wit and their, the amount of feeling that is quite often put into them? Expression, yeah? You must understand what I'm saying here, that uh, obviously we all strive as we gain experience to uh, produce work of quality. But I would argue that children's drawings obviously have qualities that quite often evade us when we start in earnest to, to be better. So in this last section, I'd like to talk about how certain artists use those things that some of us lose as we become an adult and think that a good drawing is all about um, proportion and paying attention to contour and whatever. That, that obviously those things are important, but you you have to weigh those against what else is going on and what, as well as what you are thinking, what what you are feeling. Yeah. We want to be able to express and articulate ideas with equal weight. And when those two things come together, thanks to our physical abilities on the page, using our, our muscles and, and, and memory, that's when the magic happens, I believe. And I think a lot of people would agree with me. That's when the magic happens, and that's what you're trying to get to on your terms, whether it is through observational drawing, whether it is through purely imaginative, crazy drawing. It doesn't matter as much as you balancing all those different elements and, and paying them attention, even if some of them are, to a degree, more fo to the forefront and others on, on, on the back. Maybe you're going to have to watch that a few times to, to absorb what I'm saying here, but... I'm, I'm not trying to um, 
I'm not trying to play with your brain here. I'm trying to give you the toolkit to help you find your own drawing style. Yeah. OK, let's have a look at some examples. No words, no music, just look. So, which drawings moved you the most? Which did you feel most close to? I'd like you to spend some time reflecting and, and working out why certain drawings moved you personally. Let's close with some thoughts. <laughs> 